Welcome back to the world's worst fishing, everybody. I'm Chris Jones, and tonight, well, today, we're going to be uh, doing another popular covers episode. And uh, but first, we are going to enjoy some Oktoberfest beer. This is obviously German because if it's not German, it's not really beer. That's fantastic. So I've been thinking of some colors to do. And um, I've done a lot of Florida type colors, but I haven't done enough shad colors. So today I'm going to try to do Tennessee shad. And um, I played with it the other day. I didn't really get it where I wanted to, but uh, but I've been looking at some pictures, and uh, I think Kitek has a really great Tennessee shad. So we're going to try and duplicate that, and I'm going to show you how to make Tennessee shad, uh, at least how I would go about trying to make it. And uh, I think it's going to come out really good, especially in the boom shad. Also, one thing to keep in mind, I have a new bait coming. Uh, so I have a new mold coming here probably in two weeks. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I'm going to do like a bait reveal movie uh, video uh, coming up soon. And um, I think I'm going to do a name contest because I don't have a name yet for the new bait. So I'm probably just going to do a name contest. And uh, whoever's name I choose uh, will win some free baits of the new bait. Um, so that's something that I want to do as well. But we're going to go ahead. I'm going to finish this beer and then we're going to go ahead and jump in. And uh, thanks again for watching. And this is Tennessee Shad. Okay, so there it is. That is the Kitek swim bait. Um, what is it? The fat swing? I don't even, I can't even tell what that means. But here is the Tennessee Shad that I would like to do. So let's take a look. We obviously have a sort of brown pearl top, almost looks like Arkansas Shiner. And um, we have kind of a translucent pearl bottom with some silver flake in it. Um, so we're gonna have to do a couple things here. I don't actually have a, uh, a brown pearl, although I do have some on the way. I don't have it yet. And in case you don't either, Here's what we can do. So, the top part, so both sides have pearl. So the top part is obviously the, the brown side, and so it's gonna be more of a brown pearl. So we're gonna add a little bit of Carolina pumpkin, which is basically just brown. So we're just gonna add a few drops there, nothing, nothing uh, over the top. So we're gonna add a few drops, and then we're gonna stir that up and see what we have. Okay, because I don't want it to be too thick, but it also has to have a pearl effect. And so we're going to substitute brown pearl, uh, well, the lack of brown pearl, with straight white pearl. So we're going to add about a half a quarter teaspoon scoop of white pearl. And then we're basically going to try and drown out the white pearl with the brown, which will give us sort of a brown pearl because the pearl effect is still going to be seen even if you add color to it. It's just not gonna be straight white pearl anymore. So we're gonna stir that in for a little bit and I can already tell that I'm going to need some more brown. So we're gonna add some more brown, just to thicken it up. Then we're gonna give that another stir. We wanna make sure and stir in our powder as well because you always have to stir powder really well. And it's looking okay, but it needs to be a little bit darker. And the way to do that is to live a little dangerous and add a little bit of black. So we'll do, let's start with three drops of black, see what we get. You can immediately tell that that's darkened up. And you have to keep in mind that once you cook it, it will also darken. So that's looking okay. Um, I might have to actually thicken it up at some point, um, but I think the overall color is going to turn out uh, pretty much on par. One thing that I want to add, I don't know, I haven't seen this particular Tennessee Shad in person. One thing that I know 
uh, about shad is that a lot of a lot of the scales they almost have like a green hue to them um, and then a lot of baits also uh, shad colors and and saltwater menhaden things like that pilchards they have like a little bit of a green hue so we're going to add a little bit of green well chartreuse pearl just to give it a slight green hue and i think that will have a very realistic effect to what an actual uh, shad scale would, would look like and then that you know shad scales they, they kind of they, they kind of have a lot of colors coming out of them when the sunlight hits you have blue you have a little bit of hint of green my my shad color mint chocolate chip is basically based around the, the blue uh, re reflection that you get off of shad scales so we're gonna leave that I think that works okay um, the bottom side is is another pearl and um, and it's more white pearl so we're obviously going to add white pearl to the bottom so we're gonna add about just a regular scoop of white pearl and it's not a brilliant brilliant white it, it's kind of an off-white from what I can tell um, so I'm trying to think of what I can do how I can maybe make it more of a cream color so I'm looking more at this bottom color and the more I look at it the more I don't like it I'm actually going to make mine a little more silver um, and less kind of cream color so what we are going to do is add a hint of silver pearl to it to go along with the white pearl and that will kind of give it a more silvery gray effect so we're just gonna add a little bit there and uh, we will see how that turns out and then obviously on the bottom side I have to add some silver flake and uh, either way it's gonna be really flashy and uh, and I think it's gonna look okay all right, so we're going to stir those two pearls in. And uh, I know the stirring is kind of boring, but it's important to see how much you have to stir in pearls <laughs> or else you will get some bad clumps and then the clumps will burn. You, uh, you really have to stir it in really well. And uh, I know I emphasize that every video and it probably gets repetitive, but for any new viewers out there who may be new to plastics, always stir your pearls so I think we're good there and um, we're gonna go ahead and give them a touch of heat stabilizer because why not and then we're gonna go ahead and vacuum the air out of these and then we'll cook them up and then we will meet y'all after that okay we are all cooked up so here is our brown pearl side and uh, boy I can just barely see that hint of green in it which which is kind of cool then here's our bottom pearl um, so we're gonna go ahead and add the silver flake to the bottom side and I don't have the correct size silver uh, the silver in the picture is probably the regular small 0 0.015 or, or it might even be some other size between the 1.5 and the 3.5 all I have is the teeny tiny but Nonetheless, we're gonna load it up. So we're gonna do a full scoop, full quarter teaspoon scoop. And then it looks like um, in the pictures uh, that there might be just a little bit of black flake in it as well. And I don't have the size black flake that I think I'm seeing. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the medium size and that'll just give it a little bit of texture effect. Um, it really won't do much else um, but I think it'll actually look fairly nice so let's mix this up and see if I have anything worth doing here that would actually look that's not bad guys that would look good by itself I would just oh I could fill an Alabama rig with that all right let's look at the brown side the brown side's looking okay um, I might thicken it up just a smidge so I'm going to add maybe just a little bit more brown and then maybe one more black and you would be amazed at what difference one drop can make especially when it's a really um, overpowering color like black is that's looking pretty good 
That is pretty good. In fact, I am going to add a little bit more green if I can find. Where did I put my scoop? Has anybody seen the scoop spoon? Here it is. It's all the way over here. I'm going to put a little bit more of this green in there because I really want that to come through. I can kind of see it, but I think I can only see it because I know that it's there. <laughs> so we're going to put a little more in. And normally you want to add pearls or any kind of powder to cold plastic. It'll still work if you add it to hot plastic. Um, I think just the manufacturers recommend that you add it cold. There we go. That is, oh, that's perfect. Guys, if this doesn't come out good, then I give up. And I'll go back to making normal stuff like June bug. Okay, all right. So that looks really good right there. I really like that color. That's like a good color just by itself. All right, so next up, we're going to get these back up to a even temperature, and then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill a couple molds. I have the boom shad, I have our fluke. I don't know if you can see those. Boom shad, fluke, and then I'm gonna do a separate run um, to see what it looks like in a uh, Cinco worm. So that could be interesting. All right, ready, set, go. This is hopefully Tennessee shad. Here we go. Gonna draw up here with the twin injector. And let's go to work here. Okay, let's see what we have. Should have something decent, right? We will see. Hey, hey, hey. There is what we have. Let's get, uh, we're gonna get a little extra light on it. There we go. I don't know if that helps on camera, but that kind of brings out the pearl in person. You can see the two sides there. We'll go ahead and cut the, cut the cell phone light. So there it is. We have our brown pearl top. And then the silver kind of creamy pearl. Um, it actually turned out closer to the picture than I thought it would. With our, uh, and then uh, with, sorry, getting tongue tied tonight. We have the brown top and then we have the kind of the pearl cream bottom with a silver flake and just a hint of black flake. Every now and then there's a little bit of black flake in it. And uh, I think that actually looks really good. It definitely looks like Tennessee Shad to me. And, uh, and don't be fooled by the name, guys. I've seen shad in Florida that look just like this. It's not just a, not just a Tennessee thing. <laughs> okay, fluke time. Well, I tell you what, just from the top, they look exactly like Arkansas Shiner. <laughs> Which is basically kind of what Tennessee shad is. It's basically, oh, I like those guys. It's basically Arkansas Shiner with some silver flake and, um... And, and some black flake in it. So there it is. I think that is a killer shad pattern, guys. All right, now we're gonna make it in a uh, Cinco uh, because I think that would just look really cool. I, I wouldn't really, I don't think that would make like a great regular worm color, but Cinco's kinda, everything kinda works in a Cinco. Okay, so now we're gonna make some, uh, some Cinco's, some Stogies. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt to each side just to, uh, just to be authentic. <laughs> and um, I know that these videos are for color purposes, but you know I also wanna demonstrate the right way to, to make baits, not just the colors. Um, so if you're like me, and you only really have one blend of plastic, so I use, right now I use just a straight medium firmness plastic and I have to alter it um, depending on what type of bait I'm making and also depending on the customer. Some customers want really firm, some want really soft. Um, so whenever you're dealing with one type of plastic like I am, uh, you, you have to alter it. And so whenever you are making Cinco's, you obviously want them softer. 
So a quick eat way to, to do that is to, is to squirt a bunch of softener into them. I don't really measure. I just put as much in there as I think will do the job. Um, I've just I've done it enough to where I'm confident in it. Um, I'm sure it's probably a better idea to measure these things out and, and really lock your formulas in, which I honestly, I used to do that. I used to be a little better about sticking to a formula when I was first starting out. You know, over time, you kind of develop a feel for these things. Um, softener works better, um, kind of like uh, pearls and highlights when you add it to cold plastic, but if you want to go ahead and soften up already cooked plastic, you can add it to the um, to, to the already cooked plastic. So we're gonna move the camera real quick, just to give you a more wide view here. And then we're gonna make a few Cinco's. And remember, it's always good to wear both gloves whenever you're working with the twin injector. Um, just right then, I just kind of was gonna do those real quick and didn't feel like wearing your glove. But don't be like me, always wear your gloves. And another thing, don't make plastics wearing UGG slippers. Uh, a, they're made out of suede leather and they're expensive and it's just a dumb idea, but you'll also burn your feet if you drip anything off the edge of your table so um just basically don't don't do that right there okay and now for the stogies drum roll please <laughs> oh man that's so much fun all right here we go hey not bad there it is that might be my favorite there is the, let me get the camera up, the Tennessee Shad Stogie Worm. Right there. Those are some shad-tastic Cinco's. There we go. There is a layout. Sorry for the shadow. That's me. <laughs> there, uh, excuse me, that's the camera. There is a layout of Tennessee Shad, or as I like to call it, Arkansas Shiner with some sparkle. Well guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, something new. Like I said, I've only played around with Tennessee Shad once before and uh, that was a little bit, um, actually that was over the that was over the weekend. I had a customer request to make it, uh, to make Tennessee Shad and I said, hey man, like I, I don't even know how to do it. Let me play with it first. You know, I, I wasn't gonna send out an invoice until I had something that I was confident in. Um, so tonight was kind of a, a, a two-part uh, video in my mind. It, it was, I'll do a popular colors for Tennessee Shad and I'll get a little bit more practice with it because uh, I definitely needed the practice. So, um, but yeah, that, that is it. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that, um, you know, except for the exact type of glitter, uh, I'm pretty confident that that looks a lot like uh, most Tennessee Shad, uh, at least that, that I can find. Uh, I've seen it in person many times. I've never personally used it. Um, but like I said, I've seen it. Uh, Kitek, you know, it's really popular in, in, in swim baits mainly. Uh, but I think it makes uh, a really good jerk bait. And, uh, and I'm really impressed with how it looks in a Cinco worm. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. Shoot me a comment down below. And please let me know what you would like to see next. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a new bait coming, uh, so so it's it's a big question mark. What's the new bait going to be? And uh, and like I said, we'll be doing a video to release the new bait and a name challenge. So um, you know, once I do that, shoot shoot a lot of comments on that video. Let me have your name suggestions, and then we'll do a giveaway for the winner. So that's going to wrap it up for today. And uh, thanks again for watching the world's worst fishing, and we'll see you next time.